See, 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 God is so good that he can take the bad mess that we go through and use that pressure and fire to bring out your bling and to affirm your humanity and to declare that no matter what you've been through, you do matter. I got to get done here. Well, how does that work? How does that work? How does that work? Let me give you three quick things, three quick things to tell you, to tell you how it works. How, I, I'm going to help you bring out your bling. Mm-hmm. First, we've got to stop the epidemic of negativity. We've got to stop the abuse, the crime, the violence that's going on in our homes, our churches, and our communities. Brothers and sisters, when you want a helping hand, check out the one that's on the end of your arm. I'm trying to help you here. In other words, black and brown folk, stop looking for somebody else to solve your problems and to bring you justice. Come on, somebody. Quit looking for somebody else to do what God has given you, the strength, the resources, and the power to do for yourself. Ain't that what Rispa did? Here's this concubine. The king is dead. Nobody wants anything to do with her. And she said, you know what? Nobody else is going to be responsible for protecting the dignity of my dead kids. So I'm going to protect their dignity myself. I'm going to cover them. And if it takes months and months of fighting off scavengers, I'm going to do whatever it takes because the power is in my hand. Would you tell somebody the power is in your hand? Number two, the text makes reference to something that is powerful. And that is that our personal and public demonstration can result in political and social transformation. Notice here, in verses 11 through 13, when David was told, that Rizpah had done this thing concerning her son. The Bible said that he went and took the bones of Saul and Jonathan from Jabez Gilead, went and got the bones of Rizpah's son and properly buried them with dignity. When he heard that Rizpah was out there from April to October, Fighting off the vultures and the jackal, he had a reversal of his public policy. Because sometimes, watch this, it does take a demonstration. Sometimes it does take what other folk look at as being extreme. Because extreme times sometimes call for extreme measures. So yeah, we do need to be in the streets. Yeah, we do need to demonstrate. Oh, yeah, we do need to have die-ins and sit-ins and walk-ins. And, yes, yeah, sometimes we do need to block off the streets and block off the highway and get the attention of the powers that be to let them know that we mean business. I'm looking for God to deliver me from saints that are just lukewarm, uh, who don't want to do anything but go to church uh, and be comfortable. Uh, oh, that's why if you come here to spring a hope, if all you want to do is hear a word that's going to make you feel good, you're coming to the wrong place because the word of God, uh, my, 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 uh, will call you into action. Uh, the world is too deadly a place for us to just sit around and and be comfortable. Hell is too hot and black folk are in too much pain and trouble for us to just come to church and sit and shout and then go on our merry way. We need somebody who's willing to do something extreme. And Rizpa uh, demonstrated. And you might not like demonstrations. But whatever job or work you do, it's because somebody demonstrated. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to help y'all here. Whatever house you live in, I don't care if it's here in Old Hill or if you got a fancy house out in Long Meadow, it's because somebody demonstrated. 
Do you not know whatever freedom you have because somebody demonstrated? Uh, do you not know that, that, that India broke the back of colonialism because Gandhi demonstrated? Don't you know that because Nelson Mandela and Desmond Tutu and Stephen Biko and Winnie Mandela demonstrated apartheid was abolished in South Africa? Do you know that because Martin Luther King Jr. demonstrated, because Medgar Evers demonstrated, because Rosa Parks demonstrated that there was a change of public policy in America? Huh? And well, maybe we need to demonstrate. Huh? Maybe we need to close the doors of every church in Springfield uh, and pour out onto the streets. Y'all ain't gonna help me in here. And demonstrate uh, and show somebody that we're sick and tired, as Fannie Lou Hamer said, of being sick and tired. Well, let, let me give you my final point. Finally, the text lets us know that after we've done everything else, after we fought and demonstrated and cried and protested and prayed and voted and worked to end the negativity in our community, after the grand juries have refused to charge the killers of our sons and the criminal justice system has failed to mete out justice to black and brown people across the nation that we still have a God that sits on the throne who yet emphatically declares that every life that I created matters to me that black lives and brown lives and yellow lives and purple lives and every life that I made matters. And so the text says that when David had, oh watch this, had all of the bodies buried in dignity. Notice again verse 14. Buried the bones of Saul and Jonathan. Buried the bones of Rizpah's son. After that, the Bible said, God answered prayer and lifted the famine from the land. After they were buried in dignity, God heard the prayers of the people and the famine was over. I came by here to let America know that until it understands that the lives of black and brown people matter, until there is true justice in the land, until we reach the point noted by the Old Testament prophet Amos where justice runs down like water and righteousness like a mighty stream, that there will remain a famine in America. Pastor Schwann, you don't know what you're talking about because the economy is up and there's no famine in the land. Yeah, there's a famine in the land. I'm talking about a moral famine. I'm talking about an empathy famine. I'm talking about an inability to recognize the good in one another, to understand that we are our brother's keeper, that in the words of Dr. King, we are all tied together in a single garment of destiny. We have an empathy famine when we're still sending our children down corridors of shame in schools where the color of your skin still affects uh, the content of your education. We have a famine when CEOs are making more in 10 minutes than some workers make in 10 months. We have a famine when families lose their homes so that lenders can make a profit. We have a famine when mothers can't afford a doctor when their children get sick. We have a famine when there's one kind of justice for some and another kind of justice for others. We have a famine when our children are fed to the prisons from a pipeline that starts as soon as they get into middle school. We have a famine when homeless veterans sleep on the streets of our city when attempts are made to restrict the voting rights of some, when young black men are more likely to go to prison than to go to college, uh, when we are still looking for black first and brown first in the 21st century, and we have a famine when the death of a 12-year-old reveals the 
deficit in our compassion and God calls on us uh, to feed the sick and to care for the least of these. Uh, he commands that we treat everybody like they are our own.